If you have been wanting to smooth the skin of your photos within Imagine, the time is now. Smooth Skin is here. You can craft the perfect balance of natural beauty with discrete adjustments until you reach your desired goal. As always, you're in complete control. Adjust and customize the smoothness, texture, clarity, and sharpness to reflect your unique style. It seamlessly integrates into your editing process with a single click to ensure a quick and efficient path to flawless polish complexions. Simply open the Imagine app to try Smooth Skin today. I'm not going to have to like, you know, Photoshop their shirt that's got unloose or their lipstick on their teeth or their hair mm -hmm. in their mouth because I already see it with my eyes. <laughs> Workflows is a podcast about saving you time and money in your photography business. I'm your host, Scott Wyden-Kifowitz, a photographer and content creator who struggles with dyslexia, colorblindness, introversion, and anxiety stemming from years of being bullied as a child. Guess what? Workflows have been my rock. I have workflows for every aspect of my life. That's why I am so happy to bring you Workflows, a podcast presented by Imagine. As a company dedicated to saving you time and money in your photography business, it makes sense to enhance and expand the conversation to all things Workflows. Tune in and subscribe to hear stories, strategies, and tools that can be your rock. Hear from people just like you. Get to work with Workflows. Carissa Wu stands out with her unique approach to wedding photography, combining a heartfelt connection with clients and an exceptional eye for detail. Her skill in using natural light brings out the best in every subject, while her focus on genuine moments captures the essence of each story. For us as photographers, she's not just a colleague, but a source of inspiration and education, demonstrating the art of transforming wedding photos into narratives of light emotion, and beauty. Carissa is also the host of the podcast Get a Heck Yes, which we recommend that you also give a listen to. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Carissa Wu. What's up, Carissa? What's up, Scott? <laughs> I got a question for you before we dive into all of your workflows. What is your most embarrassing photography moment? Oh. Uh so I'm kind of more, I was more like, I'm more of an aggressive photographer. I think I just wasn't trained and I was always like, take it 5,000 shots and I just like have to get the shot and like, it's all about my blog. And so pretty much I was snapping in front of the priest. So I went behind the priest, started taking some pictures and in front of the whole, like whatever, 200 people, he said, do you mind? <laughs> so me being kind of like stubborn I just I was so humiliated but then I would get snapping you know like I was yeah. just like whatever and then so the whole night the whole reception everyone's like do you mind do you <laughs> mind <laughs> oh, you become the do mind girl <laughs> yes. do you mind girl ay, ay. that's oh man that's one of those moments where you, you I mean maybe you didn't feel that way but I would have like shriveled up and been like oh, yeah. You know, I, I would have felt so tiny in, in that moment. Oh, I felt, but. I felt really, really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just embarrass myself all the time, but there's so many, like, I was always embarrassed and now I'm just like, I'm so tough, tough skin. And if someone calls me out on something, I'll call him out on something too. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Someone's like, his name is not brother, it's Jordan. And I was like, he's brother to me today <laughs> you yeah, know just like yeah, i didn't yeah. have that like whip before you know <laughs> yeah i'm not remembering his name today his name is yeah. brother. <laughs> not in my yeah. book <laughs> yep yep yeah I, I have a i have a at the time we're, we're recording this at the, at the end of the month i'm record i'm doing a family session and i asked the 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 client i was like i'm not gonna remember all your entire family's names because it's not like just the immediate family it's like the grandparents and stuff like that i'm like i'm not gonna remember everybody's name just and I didn't say that to, to him, but I was like, can you tell me what your what music or movies your kids are into so I can like load it up on my phone that's mounted uh, on top of my camera and they can, yeah. you know, and, and he went into a whole thing on 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 their names and stuff. And I'm like, this is great, but also I'm not going to remember it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all right. It's all right. Totally. Yeah. 
Um, hey, you, dad, mom, little brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. It, it's totally going to be grandma and grandpa. Or actually, they did have nicknames, so I'm going to have to remember that because it's actually a surprise. I think it's a surprise photo session for the grandparents. So I'll have to remember Aww. their names. But, Aww, but that's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So let's dive into workflows. Now, I want you to think when you when you when you have the camera in your hand, right? What is one thing you do for the photographic process behind the camera that saves you time? Oh my God. So I've been kind of a slow adopter on many things, many platforms, like slow adopter <laughs> for podcasts, slow adopter for TikTok. And for Reels, when Reels came out, I was like, I'm not going to be a slow adopter. <laughs> like, I'm going to be like on the forefront of this and learn yeah. everything I know. So I guess is for with my phone. So I know exactly like I see a really interesting moment that happens on the day. So I get really good B-roll. And if someone takes it from me, like a second shooter, it doesn't come out right. Mm. Like I have to do it myself and it has to be like seven seconds. And I'm like in their face out in good light. I almost direct even better with my phone. <laughs> 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 I'm like, give it to me, baby. Because <laughs> I know this is going like on a reel, like on Monday. <laughs> so you have, so, you have camera in one hand and phone in the other yeah, hand? Yeah, so that saves okay. me like a ton of time because, you know, people could completely overthink it and not post a reel for another month. But if you know exactly what you're posting and that like special moment of anything that like kind of stands out from the day, then that's what's going on the reel. Mm. Saves me a lot of time. Have you, have you, ever thought about mounting your phone on your camera to get that b-roll no because i don't need that much it's okay. just it's just and I, I even tell the couple i was like i'm not just using my phone like this is or this is all high risk. i was like don't worry yeah. like and you're going on the reel on monday you know <laughs> and people like get mad if i don't post them on the reels like someone mm. dm me like oh we we got no love on your insta like that's messed up and i was like oh my god i totally forgot like <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's, it, that's funny that people get like so upset over something like like to me that's like not like I don't know. I, I wouldn't imagine one of my clients getting so so upset over it, but I guess I don't know, that's interesting. That's like interesting. not seeing I don't yourself do, in the like not seeing yourself in the yearbook, like oh like, Yeah, you know? yeah, I guess. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess I putting myself in, in the client's shoes, I guess if 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 the photographer I was hiring was doing it for almost every client, then yeah, at that point, you know, but yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. A little five <laughs> but that's seconds good. of game. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good, that's good to, B-roll, I feel like, or BTS, whatever you want to call it, I feel like that's always a good thing, especially these days, for everybody to get, Whether even if it's a, one thing per client, like I, I try yeah. to now, I've been doing it lately, where I've been mounting my phone on top of my camera, I want to do something better, but right now that's what I'm doing to, to, you know, ensure that I've got a good view and it's not in the way for me, right? I don't have to hold it separate for me. It, it like, I, I like it more, but everybody has, like, I'm seeing a lot of people do the baseball hat with a GoPro clip to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, so I don't know, lots of ways to do it. Yeah. So moving on to the business side of things then, what is one thing you do for the business that has saved you time or money. And don't say imagine. We will get to imagine. <laughs> Let's see. You know, everyone's hopping on the AI, everything, mm -hmm. you know, AI. I don't get paid for this, but I just signed up for now site N O W S I T E. And okay. I mean, it's chat GPT, but it's hard to kind of study chat GPT. Like completely you have to take like weeks and, train it so this one you know i paid the price which is not too bad and it asked me all these questions about my company and then yeah it pretty much planned my whole content for the whole year it even asked me wow. like what my offer is this is for my coaching mm -hmm. my coaching business so all my captions you know branding sales marketing who i am as like a business coach and I'm just not one for words. I was, my sister's a writer. I'm the more visual person. So yeah, business side, like it came, came up with all my content and that take, took a lot of my mental space. Even I'd be driving like to Vegas with my family and like thinking of like my next caption. 
And it's like, why do I want to live my life like that? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. That's interesting. So that's a, that's a like a monthly or annual fee type of service? Exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. That's, that's interesting. I'll have to check that out for sure as soon as we're done recording. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like, <laughs> it does a bunch of other stuff like lead magnets mm. and email sequence and responses and email responses. And even you could post a video and say, oh, caption this, you know, mm. it could say like how much humor you want in it. Do you want to be inspired? Do you want to have it educate? So a lot of features. Yeah. And I was kind of mind blown. Yeah, it's, uh, that's how I feel about, so I use a tool for podcasting called Cast Magic, and I feel the same way that you do about this, that I do with, with Cast Magic, that like, it is ChatGPT, but they put it in this shell that just makes a workflow with creating content around your podcast easier, right? Yeah. And it's not taking you out of the equation, but it's just making it easier, and it's not you having to copy and paste things into ChatGPT, then copy and paste things back out of ChatGPT and then edit. It's just, you know, it's a, I feel like companies that, that do these shells on top of, of yeah. ChatGPT for a specialized thing are really useful. Really useful. Yeah. I've been so like thankful recently. Like I think the heavens for Imagine AI and, you know, now site, it all happened to me the same time. So I went to vacation just for like a couple of days this um, last weekend and normally I would have some sort of like small anxiety because it's like I have to edit these small shoots or people want their sneak peeks and it's like even though it takes maybe two and a half hours of my time it's still like I have to do it mm. and I have to get that time no matter what to do it even when we like get there I'm like thinking like the first thing I do I don't even look at the view I like open my computer and then you know imagine happen and like these captions my Instagram was all automated. I like was so thankful. I was in the pool with my kids and I was like, I don't have to think about work or Instagram or what to say. So I was like, so thankful. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, it's, it's nice when tools be, are able to actually save you time and allow you to do things like swim in a pool. <laughs> and not think about work. And not think about work. <laughs> Okay, so so let's talk about editing now because you brought this up, but let's let's again image in down the road. But <laughs> what is one thing that you do for editing that has saved you time? Huh. Well, you got to shoot in good light. Mm -hmm. So I always shoot perfectly in shot. I don't want to say perfectly, but I really try to screen the shot and get the shot because I even tell clients I'm like, Get that trash can out. I am a mom of two. I don't want I have no time to edit that out. Like <laughs> yep. people walking, stop them. I have no time for editing. Like it's just kind of funny to me. Yeah. I, I humor myself after 13 years of shooting weddings, you know? So I'm like, um, I try to get it correctly, but I guess for that would be my best editing tip is to get it the shot <laughs> right yeah. in camera yeah. because I'm not gonna have to like, you know, Photoshop their shirt that's got unloose or their lipstick on their teeth or their hair in mm -hmm. their mouth because I already see it with my eyes. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you don't like, you know, when you first drive, it's like, you actually have to trust your eyes. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, use your mirrors because everyone's so scared, you know, like that you're so scared. You're just like, dip, 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 snap, 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 snap. It's like, focus, use your eyes, see what's happening in the shot. Even if it takes a little bit longer, like it's going to save you a whole lot of time editing. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. There was, we did an episode with Charmy Pena a while back and one of her tips was, it was similar in, in the sense of get it right in camera, but she actually goes through the extent of, of having her venues change out the light bulbs to something that doesn't flicker in the way that it shifts colors. And yeah. like not many, I don't think many photographers can get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> she, that's, does, she does. That's like yeah. And uh, so that's the same thing. Like she doesn't want to have to deal with fixing that color after or fixing, you know, one light being dimmer than the other after or whatever it might be. So she, you know, she gets it right in camera by makes the, making the venue swap the light. Wow. Bulbs. Yeah. I do something similar. Like if the groom has a little pimple, uh -huh. I'll have one of the bridesmaids like go touch it up Makeup. because I'm like, I'm not going to zap that pimple in every shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame like you. it's gonna be a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't definitely don't blame you. 
<laughs> now let's let's shift into business for a second, or sorry, a different part of the business for a second. You you've you've photographed a session, you've called it, you've edited it. Now, what is one thing you do after the session that has increased business? Yeah, so I do send a lot of sneak peeks because I just don't want them. You know, I have anxiety they like you, like you said, like in your intro of your podcast, but I don't want to be like have people waiting for stuff from me. So I send them like a ton of sneaks, like literally like 400 sneak peeks like that following week, which is mm -hmm. crazy. But I could do it in like an hour. But I send them like five pictures to their phone, like text message them and to their DMs. And I say, hey, post these pictures and, you know, tag me and the vendors. And then instead of them like looking through all them, like, you know, which one should I post or should I post or too overwhelming or should I post the photos that my friends sent me or, you know, just. It's just posting overload. So mm -hmm. this after the wedding, like your everything is hot. Like their bridesmaids are like in the market for a wedding photographer, the groomsmen, people at the wedding. It's like their energy is up and they're ready to spend money. So you want to have them be like, oh, like your photographer is amazing. You got these sneak peeks back like the following day, like booked. Yeah. That's and you know that for years there's been photographers doing sneak peeks, but thankfully now it's even easier. <laughs> Very easy. <yeah. laughs> okay, so so related to to the business thing, I've got a question that I don't get to ask many guests. So thankfully, I get to ask you about this. How do you balance being a successful photographer, an author, a podcaster, and a coach? <laughs> You balance oh and a mom. God. You just gave me more anxiety. <laughs> I, I, I mean, so I'm I'm a dad of two, and Aww. I you know I I do I do have my photography business. I do work for Imagine full time, and I do the podcast and I training at a karate school. And I I'm often thinking like, how do I have time for all this stuff? Yeah. So I'm wondering how you how you. How you do it because not not only are you doing it, but everything that you do takes a lot of time. Yeah, I'm not just like giving you a shout out because we're on the po podcast, <laughs> but my time was getting so thin where like every second was being like amounted for. And I would not edit my weddings, but I would edit all the sneak peeks and all the like the engagement mm -hmm. sessions and portraits and family sessions. But and I would just say, like, oh, it's fine because I'm, you know, chilling, watching a movie or listening to a movie while I'm editing. But then I don't even have that time anymore because I'm like client facing, podcasting, Instagramming, and I'm doing all these sales calls because I have ad run ads running to my new program. So I'm like, I really didn't have any time and I would be, it'd be miserable, like picking up my kids, taking them to dance. I'm trying to like edit in between them, trying to put like their ballet shoes on, their crime, putting them in the bathroom, you know? So that's why I said I was so thankful to like, imagine for giving me back my time but I guess for me it's just you know a juggling act and I think I'm pretty I've done this for the wedding thing for forever so when I show up to wedding it's kind of like I know what I'm routine. doing yeah. yeah yeah so it's routine I actually say it's a break in my head when I'm shooting a wedding because <laughs> I could actually be doing one thing so I'm yeah. like this is a break for me like this is like I'm like in heaven right now because I actually could focus um, yeah but, you know, podcasting ha was hard in the beginning because you're like, like so nervous. But now it's easier. And I set up a lot of workflows on like Dubsado and 17 Hats and a lot of email sequences. My whole coaching lead generation is all automated. Thank you, mm. ManyChat. And, you know, thank <laughs> you, Automation. Thank you, yeah. Flowdesk. So, yeah, I spent a lot of money to hire people to automate my business. Yeah. That's, I feel like that that's where things always come back to. The busier we get, the more automations we need. And that's not to take away the personal touches, but just to make it more efficient for us to do everything we need to do and want to do well without taking up, you know, absorbing all the, all that time that we, you know, have to put into it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so many <laughs> things to link to in the show notes today in this episode. Oh, That's great. I know I just said like a million things. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, <laughs> you, you guys want to be my sponsor? It's like yeah. give me pay so I don't have to do photography anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so my favorite part of the show. Pick a color. Oh my god, this is so fun. 
orange. Orange. Yes. Okay. I think the last couple were green. So I'm going to thumb through these and you're going to tell me when to stop. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Stop. Okay. My next question to you is, you pick this, by the way. <laughs> what do you think one of the biggest cons of being famous would be? Privacy. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. I feel like that that's become a, a thing even for those of us who are not famous, just being on Instagram, being having a podcast, being on YouTube. It's just a lot of the privacy. You already give up a bunch of it, it's, you know, in some fashion. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you people are random. People are DMing you, but and you're like trying to answer their questions, but they're not, never going to give you a dime. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm a, I, I really try hard to separate my Facebook personal account from um, business side of things and try to only approve people that I've actually met and like have some sort of connection with wow. as a way to like keep the personal out of social as much as I can. You know, I can't not post on Facebook otherwise because my family wants to see what I'm posting, but <laughs> you know, like, but, but that's intentional. I, like that's, I love that. Yeah. It's hard though. Cause sometimes I'm like, I really like that person, but we've never met. Do I, do I add the person or do I not, you know, oh, so I have to make decisions you. sometimes, but, wow. but yeah, that's, I that's the, that. that's the first level of defense against, against uh, privacy, I guess. In, yeah. In that sense, yeah. So. I've been pretty good at like, I don't post anything unless it's like kind of on brand for me, even with my kids. Mm -hmm. like I'm not going to post in the mall like we'll be only if it's like a really colorful like like pop of color or something or like I'm not going to post where I'm at like hey I'm at this festival or whatever or I hang out with these friends it just I used to do that I'm like it's so annoying yeah to like think <laughs> oh I have to post like where I'm at so my mind is more like later gram like it's if it's super cute and I have like a little story behind it and some sort of like tidbit then i'll post but yeah, yeah i'm not going to post like where i'm at all the time i've noticed that speaking of malls that are, a lot of malls have been getting very sneaky lately with putting up fun backgrounds so like oh, not saying hey take a picture yeah. here but like they're doing it so that you think that's a cute picture put my kid in front of it take a picture snap it put it and now oh yeah wait there's a hashtag hidden there showing you where you are yeah, you know, like, like Free People has a really cute wall, like that pink wall in Mel Melrose. Everyone went that. That's when Instagram was like blowing up. I I I was very lucky to be on that wave, but you know it was hard for me mentally. It's like you got so much attention on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Now it's like I barely get any attention, so I'm like, yeah, um, I have to like automate everything because is it is it worth it? Like. You know, one post, if I spend an hour in it, like it would give me all these like likes and praise and, you know, now it's like yeah. three likes or <laughs> whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you yeah, still have it, to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you do. It, it's it's the funny catch 22 now, because especially now that Meta, own you know, controls, I mean, they have for many years at this point, but like, I feel like the algorithm for Instagram was was never great, but then it just went further downhill once Meta took control of it and you know you got way less bang for the buck when it comes to you know how much effort you put into into IG so now you have to find ways to like many chat to get around certain things in order to make it more more worthwhile totally so mm -hmm. many chat was a game changer when that came out oh boy I was a whoever created that was a very smart person <laughs> very 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 smart yeah. like even my students I'm like you gotta get a mini chat by tomorrow. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> count you on this. And they're just like, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one day they'll learn. One day they'll yeah, learn. Yeah, it's not that yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and to me, like, I love playing with um, a workflow type tool. So, like, the dropping in things. Of being, if, if I do this, then I can have it do this. And then it can do this and branch off to here. I love tools like that. Just like it makes my makes my brain feel good when oh, I oh interesting I know. play around with with those. I love your brain and so it works in compartments. <laughs> yep. I'm more of like a scatterbrain. Like I'm probably the opposite of you. Like anti workflows. Like work 
work harder than rather than smarter you know <laughs> like give the client everything uh, um, and you know it's not the way to go <laughs> the, see the interesting thing is though like there's people that will do this what i like to do but they do it with post-it notes right uh -huh. they'll map it all out uh -huh. i can't that would drive me bonkers like to me i need to visualize it with a bubble and an arrow and like being able to like move it around how I want. Whereas a post-it note, I'm just like, I got to write this and then I got to stick it and then I got to move it. And like, so I feel like I'm sort of in between of like the left and right of, you know, of where, where you are, you know? So I love that. I love that. You know? So the next question I have for you is a pretty intense one. Um, <laughs> so I want you to look at your business, your photog the photography part of your business from a 30,000 foot view down. And can you please share an outline breakdown of your workflow from lead to delivery? Ooh. <laughs> huh. So if you guys don't know me, I'm a business coach. So I'm all about like mastering the sales call. But so I get the inquiry and then I actually text them and really short text. But I try to hop on a 10 minute introductory call and that's when they really get to know me and my personality. And I ask really cool questions and I say like, hey, like does your fiance want to be involved with the decision-making process? Can we get on a Zoom call? I could show you an album. And then um, I usually book on the call, the Zoom call, 30 minute Zoom call. I don't want to do that whole like hour and a half. Like I'm not going to be your best friend. I just want you to get good photos and have us connect. And then we... I do the engagement session, we're all bonded, and then I have a call before the week, ask him really fun questions. It's about 30 minutes, family dynamic, VIPs, timeline, shot list, yada, yada. Get them hyped up, make them like trust me even more. Day of, I shoot, and then I send them, like I said, sneak peeks right away, like that following Monday. Get them out of my hair for about a month and a half, and I send the rest of my editor in the Philippines, I had her like forever. She's dirt cheap, but sometimes she takes longer. That's why I send all the sneak peeks. Like I'm at her discretion of like her family and like her homework and her exams, you know. So, but I'm pretty much like feeding her whole entire family. And she sends it back. I upload or download the smart previews, send them to the gallery, send them a little gift, a little USB. Sometimes they have an album included. And yeah, even though if they don't like the photos, they're like, oh, thank you for the gift. <laughs> they always love the photos. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to end on like a note, like, hey, keep in touch. And then I used to be like all about the blog. Like I say my, my blog mm -hmm. was like my first child, but I would like send them the blog posts and, you know, be so proud and tag all the vendors, send them out, post them on the Facebook pages of like the venue. I would get some clients that way and yeah that's pretty much it and then you know usually 98 percent of the time they're super happy and usually we they hire me for like maternity sessions and so forth so you brought up right out of the gate you brought up that you text your client pretty pretty fast to get on a to get on a call at the time of us recording this i have a poll in the imagine community by the time of everybody listening to this the poll's already long past but the poll is asking what type of messaging systems do photographers, the you know, imaginers in the community, what type of messaging systems are they using to interact with their clients? Whether it's SMS, whether it's, you know, a LinkedIn message for, for, you know, corporate work, whether it's Instagram DMs, whether it's WhatsApp for not really in the US, but mostly international, <laughs> things like that. So is your, your main source of, of, text-based communication is it text messages and email or do you have anything else in between on a regular basis i just text like i don't have any special system i've tried those like for my coaching business but mm -hmm. it's it gets kind of pricey mm -hmm. um but then after i send the contract they're put in the workflow through 17 hats mm -hmm. and they get like an automatic welcome email, engagement shoot tips, wedding tips, so three month reminder, one week reminder, tips and tricks, and that's all automated. Yeah. Um, and any other automations? No, I'm very heavily like involved in the business. Like it's 
a lot of me, which is not <laughs> a really good way to scale. But I'm trying to make a little bit more boundaries in my business like next year where I only shoot six hours and the rest of the time, like my my team will be there. Next um, year, like 2024, because we're, re- we're recording this in 2023. So next year you're saying yeah. 2024. Okay. Just to just to clarify, even, and if I could <laughs> if I could manage six hours, then maybe I could go down to four and just call myself mm-hmm. like a wedding director. I I found you know I'm very thankful I found this. It's very hard to find a really good associate photographer that mm-hmm. is available and willing to put like your company first and is as good at you, as you and also knows off camera flash, you know, like some girly girls could be like really good at posing because they're just natural at it, but they're probably not going to like, you know, like off camera flash right off the bat, you know, and some guys are like, you know, no off camera flash are all geek, geek down in equipment. But then as far as like the feminine side, like they kind of lack that like emotional mm. side. So I found someone really amazing. I'm just like hoping no one takes them. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like no, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so, so, it's so hard to like replicate yourself. Yeah, 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 definitely. I am. I'm, I'm in a way I'm, I'm fortunate that I don't have to worry about it because my photography is not full-time because it's, you know, on the side from, from imagine work. Thankfully, I don't, for my, for my own sanity, I don't need to worry about that, but I definitely feel your pain. That is a, that is a, that is something that I've heard quite often. In fact, episode 30 with Michael Anthony, he even brought, brought that up of how hard it is to find, you know, associates. So I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I feel your pain. No one's gonna care. Like they're, you know, at max making mm-hmm. six, seven hundred dollars a wedding, and then you know, a photographer could make their own three, four, five, six thousand dollars plus per wedding. So it's a big difference. So of yeah. course, the owner's gonna care more about the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, that's for sure. So that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I'm gonna move into something that you you've brought it up when you talked about not now site and i'm wondering in addition to that what does the future of ai in photography look like to you i feel like photography is so much of a human connection so i feel like we are pretty bulletproof in that sense you know you can make yourself look like you're in jamaica or japan but that doesn't mean anything to me because i wasn't there you know <laughs> I feel like, you know, you kind of need a friend there holding your hand. So I think that can never like replace us. So AI is just going to make it easier for photographers. But with that said, you know, supply demand, it's going to get like more photographers or, you know, we have to charge cheaper, but then we're going to add like more cool stuff with AI to make more money. So it just like that <laughs> constant like level leveling of everything. Mm-hmm. So and I guess to answer your question, I think. AI is not going to, I, I think it, it's more going to help us than hurt us for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. That seems to be the, the common trend when I ask that question to everybody that, that it's scary at times. You know, there are certain things where you like in the back of your mind, you get a little worried, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, that fake wedding that AI generated, it's nothing, you know, it's not going to hurt you, you know, but I do think and I brought this up as well in the past, is I think there will be the handful of people in the world where an AI-generated wedding could be really valuable for them if they, for whatever reason, literally could not have a wedding. Whatever that reason might oh, be. You know? So I think in those cases, if somebody could generate a wedding for $50, <laughs> like... Might as well have it versus not having wedding photos at all because you didn't have an actual wedding. I think you he know. just made up like a, a movie pre- premise. Probably. Like a movie <laughs> script right there because it yeah. is kind of like that fake wedding. Like, oh, I, I want my mom to think I got married. Like a made up like scene. It's just like, boom, right. paid. Let's photographer, whatever money. And Where's the showrunner? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had a wedding with a Without you, and I'm happily in love. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so we're going to touch now on something that you've tried to bring up a couple times. How did Imagine impact your life? 
So I actually reached out to Imagine when I started doing like master classes and because you guys are like blowing up and it was a year ago and I would do like lies with them to, you know, kind of use the word leverage, you know, leverage your audience and my audience, yada, 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 what you learn in the coaching world. And I, I didn't hop on the bandwagon. But then, you know, recently my friend Benny Chu was on my podcast and Mm -hmm. he literally told me it saved his Thanksgiving. (laughs) (laughs) It did. It did. Yeah. And then I went to wedding MBA in Las Vegas, Mm -hmm. big convention. And I went to AI conference and I promised myself I would try it. And then Caroline Tran posted something about you don't even have to upload like your 50,000 or whatever thousand images anymore. So that was that's a thing that was kind of gatekeeping me. I was like, oh, you know, like the time type of aspect, even though it's going to save me yeah. time, but that's going to take yeah. me a while to learn something. But she's like, oh, you just could like, you know, put in one preset and then put, you know, this is called Imagine Light. And then so that's kind of what sold me. And then first, first try out the bat, like, because I told you I deliver so many images. So 333 photos for a family shoot because I'm a freaking maniac when I shoot. I'm like (laughs) crazy, like doing poses every like millisecond edited in like literally a click of a button. And I was like jumping up and down like I won the lottery. (laughs) And it it cold and and, and it straightened and cropped it too. So that was crazy Mm -hmm. because even though I would always say, yeah, it's easy. Like it's like brainless to me, but it still like takes time. Yeah. You know, click, 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 next. 300 times. Yeah. That's the, like an hour. One, so. Yeah. My, 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 one of my favorite lines of, from someone who's, who's, you know, fallen in love with Imagine and what it has done for his wedding business is that his favorite, you know, edit now on all of his photos is the next button. Oh, I know. That's it. So. It's amazing. Like I told you, I've been so thankful these past couple of weeks. Mm. It's just given me so much time because even listening to your podcast or like me being on a freaking podcast, I would be like, oh crap, I'm like I have to edit this session or, or send these memes or <laughs> yeah. I have, I have to get up there and start editing. Yeah. Like I don't have that feeling anymore. Yeah, it's great. It's great. By the time that this episode is out, so will a feature called Smooth Skin will be out as well. Oh. So... Smooth Skin is a feature where, similar to our, our subject mask feature, where we will actually, you know, select the subject and edit the subject separate from the background with using a brush mask, and you can even control what edit you want done to the subject. Smooth Skin will actually select just the skin of your subject and will soften, smooth the skin with two built-in, like, versions. There's standard and bold, and then you can also control what you know the, the the dial the settings for the the smooth skin if you want to do a custom level as well so that will be out or is out now for when this episode airs so that's, uh, <laughs> we're talking really the future us, yeah we're talking yeah yeah it's a little little tricky a little tricky to talk about it because technically it's coming out in like a little over a week from when, when we're <laughs> recording this but now everybody's listening in 2024 so a little strange Anyway, so so that is a that's a really fun thing that now a lot of photographers can utilize in their work as well and not have to, you know, go into Photoshop or do all that work in Lightroom. They can just do it with a click and, you know, perfect for newborns. And yeah, that takes a lot like of that. time. I'm yep. excited for that feature for sure. Yeah, yep. I just photographed my baby nephew who's now a little over a month. I just photographed oh. his newborn photos and I'm like... I can't wait till Smooth Skin is here so I can just re- rerun them and not have to go in and do the crusties on his forehead. <laughs> yeah, the baby, the baby tones and yeah. the skin is really tricky. Yep, yep, totally. <laughs> okay, so this has been fantastic, Carissa. Thank you so much for, for, for joining me. Where can listeners learn more about you, connect with you, and of course, see your incredible photography? Check me out. It's too bad this is going live too late, but <laughs> Scott will be already on my podcast. It's called Get <laughs> Heck Yes. It's a podcast for all wedding professionals. And check it out. And you can find me on the gram at Carissa Wu. Awesome. I will definitely link to our episode on your podcast in the show notes for this one. So that way 
everybody who's listening can go check that out as well and check out your other episodes, especially Benny's. I loved listening to Benny's. You know, I, and I have to give him so much credit because as you guys talked about in the beginning of the episode, he does not like doing podcast type yeah. things. Yeah. And you can tell in the way he was talking of how nervous he was getting and shy in that sort of environment. But he pulled through and he shared a lot of really good stuff. So I'm proud of him for doing that. So, it's so interesting Benny, if you're listening. because he's not like that, like <laughs> on real life. So right, right. So weird. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So so Benny, when I met Benny, I met him. I don't remember if I met him at Imaging first, or I think it was WPPI when I met him at first in 2023. And he came to the booth. Christine Tremolay was already, you know, already knew him. He came to the booth, and I knew he was working in the booth, but I met him for the first time there, and. I think he spent the whole day with us and was talking to everybody who came to the booth and um, and he was fantastic at it. I think hopefully he does it again at 2024 WPI, wow. which we'll find out. But yeah, uh, but yeah so uh-huh. yeah, yeah, I really like Benny. Well, Carissa, thank you again for, for joining me. Thanks for, for sharing all of your insights. Everybody's listening or watching, please be sure to check out Carissa's website. Check out her coaching, check out her photography, check out her podcast. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Carissa, so much for hanging out with me and sharing all those juicy details about your your workflows and for allowing us to get to know you a little bit more. Really appreciate your time. You have been listening to Workflows, presented by Imagine. To hear more from Workflows, to find links to our guests, and for an exclusive offer for Workflows listeners, please go to imagineai.com slash podcast and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.